we honor him today. I want to invite your attention to the book of Galatians chapter number five. And I'm going to be reading from 20, uh, verse number 22 to 23. And then we're going to go to Romans chapter number 15, verse 1 through 5. And then Psalm 37, uh, 7 through 9. And so here in Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 22. But I'm going to back up to verse number 19 and then uh, uh, verse number 18. He says this, but if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variances, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. As for which I tell you, as I also I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But verse number 22 is where I want to hone in on. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, comma, joy, comma, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and its lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us do not be desirous of vain glory, uh, but provoking one another, envying one another, Ah, mm. let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another and envying one another. Y'all got to excuse me for a second. It's a little hot in this room, so I got to open up the door. So I want to talk to your hearts today. There's a word, and I'm going to read it from the Good News Translation from the same verse, 5, 22 through 23. But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And there's one fruit of the Spirit that I want to extract to talk about today and that's patience patience i just had you listening to uh pastor shirley caesar uh, singing the song keep patiently waiting the lord will bring you out patience by definition is the quality or the virtue of patience that is presented as either forbearance or endurance in the former sense, it is a quality of self-restraint or of not giving away to anger. Even in the face of provocation, it is attributed to both God and man and is closely related to mercy and compassion. Talking about patience, we, we uh, many times talk about the fruit of the Spirit and we just got through reading them here in Galatians 5. But the one that I want to extract and pick and pluck is patience. A synonym for patience is the same word, which is composure, diligence, endurance, fortitude, grit, humility, moderation, perseverance, persistence, poise, restraint, self-control, tolerance, bearing, calmness, consistency, cool, or again, the word forbearance. Patience, we all have need of patience, even in the midst of test and trial. We want a thing to be over and done with. We want it to be able to move forward. We don't like sitting and waiting. We don't like, we want what we want, when we want it, how we want it, so we can just move on to the next thing. However, 
when it comes down to Jesus Christ, patience, as we've all been taught and heard, that patience is a virtue. Ah, hmm. Patience implies sufferings, enduring, or waiting as a determination of the will and not simply under necessity. Patience, such as it is essential that the Christian virtue to exercise of which there are many exhortations. We need to wait patiently for God to endure uncomplainingly the various forms of sufferings, wrongs, and evils that we meet with, all of us as children of God. It is a virtue that all of us should have to, shall I say, pluck from one time to another. We have to take hold and apply it, even though applying patience often, it does not feel good then feel good waiting because a thing seems to be taking forever. However, uh, we are to bear patiently injustices which cannot remedy, we cannot remedy and provocations which we cannot remove. Patience is often hard to gain and to maintain. It's hard, but we serve the God of patience. <laughs> it, it, it is, it is, one thing about patience, tribulation, the Bible says, worketh patience. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. In order for you, you know, I, I've been saved a long time. and I've, I've listened to saints. You know what? I'm, I'm in praying. I'm asking God to give me patience. Well, I know when you ask for patience, trouble is coming. And then when the trouble comes, you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to be steady. You're going to have to wait and not complain. You're going to have to be still and know that he is God. No matter how difficult a situation may be, patience is what we have to exhibit. Sometimes even in a bad marriage, a bad relationship, whatever the, 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 the situation may be, you're going to have to endure patience. Endure patience. And allow patience to have her perfect work. You want deliverance now, but God is still working on you because he's burning some stuff out of you and putting some things in you that you didn't know that you needed. But tribulation has a way of allowing you to see what is in you. Ah, we serve the God of patience. Romans chapter number 15. Let me go because I... I feel the anointing. I don't want to stay too long in an area. Romans 15, and he says in verse number one, uh, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. We that are strong in the Lord and the power of his might, you ought to have some some grit, some stick to itness, some some patience, some endurance, some some long suffering that you're going to have to exhibit to those who are weak, who have infirmities, ah, and not to please ourselves. You are to show patience, bear the infirmities of those who are not as strong as you are. There are some people in the church, there are some people outside the church who endure things that you probably have already gone through, but God has given you the patience to be able to understand where they are. So you don't rush to verse number two. He says that every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but that is, as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Mm. Verse number four, for whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The scriptures have taught all these things are written so that you and Ata Memosha can learn patience. Uh, you find out how God moves. You find out how people endured and began to be still and trust that the God that they serve knows how to bring them out after a while. Patience and comfort of the scriptures that we might 
have hope. God is looking for us to put our trust and our confidence in his word, not in man, not in who can do this and who can deliver me from that, not in your personal ability, but in the hand of God who has the power not only to sustain you, but to deliver you at the same time. We, we all know the story about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We know the story about, amen, how they were thrown in the fiery furnace and, amen, how the, 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 the king was told, told them to turn up the fire that it's hotter now. Amen. And so they looked in and they saw, wait a minute, we threw in three, but are there, is there not four that we see? See, they made and purposed in their heart that they would not bow to the king's music. God told Shammai. However, when you are convinced that the God who spans the universe is with you and in you, no matter what life dictates, God will give you the patience just to endure it. And after a while, he will bring you out. Verse number five, he says, now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, you've got to put all of your confidence. I, I know it's difficult. I know you're up all night. I know tears are running down your face. I know your tears have become your meat. I know you're walking the table. You're walking the, the, the floor all night wondering what is going on? What is happening? Where is my son? Where is my daughter? But God has a way. Ah, he'll give you the strength. See, just because my shut up. Just because you can't see God at work does not mean that he's not at work. He wants us to be steadfast ah, as being able to grant the grace to those who look to him and depend on him for that grace. We serve the God of grace and the God of patience. And since he is the God of patience, he will give you the patience just to be still and to wait. Mm. It is in reliance on God and acceptance of his will and trust, his goodness, wisdom, and faithfulness that we are enabled to endure and to hope steadfastly. Ah, church, God, has, he's doing some things with us as his people. I am grateful because you don't understand huh? the God that we serve. He is in full control. You ought to tell somebody God is in control. You ought to tell yourself God is in full control. Nothing has caught him by chance. Nothing catches him by surprise. Everything that happens to you, beloved, amen, is because God has given permission for it to be so. Ah, what does God say about patience? He tells us to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Ah, let us not become weary in doing what is good and what is right. Ah, at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up and continue to wait patiently for God's hand to deliver. But if we hope for what we do not see, we yet have patience and we wait for it. We completely humble ourselves and be gentle. We're patient, bearing with one another in love. That's what the God of the universe is. You have to be patient, even with your brothers and sisters. Amen. Listen, everybody is not on the same growth pattern. Everybody's not growing at the same time in the kingdom of God. There are some that are growing slower than others. Amen. There are some that are growing rapidly because it all depends on what God has for you to do. However, all of us are going to have to exemplify patience at one point or another in our life. Let's go to Psalm, amen, 37. Psalm 37, glory to God. Hallelujah to God. Psalm 37. And let's read verse number seven. Well, let's 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 start at verse number one. I, I, I often do this, but I want to go to verse number one. He says, Fret not thyself. Don't you worry. Don't don't let don't don't let this get on your nerves. Whatever you're dealing with, don't let it, don't let it bother you. Don't let it rob you of your sleep. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. 
neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herbs. Don't worry about what's happening on the outside. Don't listen, 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 listen. I found out you don't have to know everything. You don't need to know everything. Isn't it wonderful? I'm going to say it. It's wonderful that God does not show us everything that's in front of us. Because if he showed us what is befalling us, then we would holler, no, I can't handle this. I can't take this. I don't want to go through this. Uh -uh. God already determined what your ability is. Remember when Satan came to and fro, he was walking up and down in the earth, seeking whom he may devour, and he found himself in line waiting, waiting to hear, waiting to talk to God, amen, about who is next. It may be you. It may be me. The Bible says that he came to God and he says, uh, he said, well, where are you coming from? He said, walking to and fro in the earth. And he said, God says, have you considered my servant Job? Ah, God, God, God said it. God, Satan didn't say it. Satan didn't give any suggestions, but God said it. He loves me. He eschews evil. And he says, oh, all right. But you got a hedge about it. If you take the hedge down, I, 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 I'll see. But see, God didn't say that he had a hedge around Job. Huh? He says, it, but if you move it. But see, here's what I know about when it comes down to us. God is the one that's watching and taking care of us. He knows you. He knows your character. He knows your flaws. He knows what's going on in the inside. He knows what you prayed. And he knows what it's going to take in order for the prayer. Ah, ah, to come to fruition. Verse number two. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Verse number four. He says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee what? The desires of your heart. Then he says in verse number five. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. However, you've got to commit your way unto the Lord before he brings it to pass. Then he says, verse number six, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Verse number seven is where I want. He says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. God's going to always show up in the midst of the situation you find yourself. You crying out for salvation, I guarantee you when you open your mouth to pray and you ask him where Father, do you want me to go to receive the salvation that you've given in your word? He will tell you exactly where to go. Listen, God is not playing uh, hopscotch. He's not playing hide and seek when it comes down to truth and soul truth. He says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. He said, don't, don't, don't you, don't you worry. Don't worry. God tells you, and I'm telling you, my brothers and my sisters, ladies and gentlemen, don't allow yourself to be fretting because you see the enemy prospering or the wicked prospering around you. When I was young man, I was used to be on the bus and I would catch the bus down Rosecrans Avenue coming from Compton on my way to Bible class. And, and I, it was during the time where uh, the 560 SEL was very popular, the square one. And I would look riding down the street. And so I'm on the bus and I'm looking at the 560 L, uh, SEL Mercedes. They sitting in the driveway of homes, but they sitting on dirt. If you can afford, and my thought has always been, if you can afford a 560 SEL Mercedes, then surely you can pave a driveway. You ain't got to park in the dirt. But here's the thing that got me was, 
while I was on the bus and I was looking at all of these things, I'm Lord, Lord, I'm doing everything I know how to do. I'm pleasing you. Look like, why is doors not opening for me? And so when I got to the church, the Lord spoke to me while I was on the bus. And he says, the wicked prosper, but the soul is in jeopardy. Don't, don't, don't worry about what you see the wicked doing. The soul is remaining in jeopardy. And when I got to the sanctuary, my pastor was teaching and he read the verse, my foot almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. <laughs> Just because the wicked look like everything is going for them don't mean that God is behind it. He says, my foot almost slipped when I saw, oh, the prosperity of the wicked. But until I got to the sanctuary, I saw the end thereof. So he, what am I saying? What am I saying to you? He says, rest in the Lord. Cease from anger. Don't fret yourself because don't fret yourself here in any wise because of evildoers. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth for yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more. Mm. That's, that's, listen, you, God gives you comfort in the scriptures. And you've got to allow the scriptures to get off this page. I, I know, I know, my God. I know, I know you're in circumstances right now. I know you've got some stuff going on. I know you've got tears in your heart. I know tears are running down your face. I know you don't understand everything. I know you don't understand why God is doing the way he's doing. Listen, but this is why his word have I hid in my heart. I'm waiting patiently. I am exhibiting patience for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you will find yourself getting rooted, getting settled and getting established in faith. And that's what God is doing even right now. Yes, we have gone through 2020, 2021. Yes, amen, things have happened in our experience. But listen, he's the same God who gives us patience. He's the same God who works in the kingdom of men. He's the same God that is yesterday, today, and forevermore. Listen, whatever God is doing with you, please understand, put it in neutral and rest in the Lord and do good. Ah, be still and know that he is God. Patiently wait patiently wait. Ah, be still, be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Be still since the Lord. Since the Lord what? Well, since the Lord walks with me. <laughs> be still since he walks with me in Leviticus 26 and 12. Ah, since the Lord guards me as the apple of his eye in Deuteronomy 32 and verse 10. Be still, since the Lord, my God, since the Lord, what? Since the Lord covers me with favor, found in Psalm 5, verse number 12. Since the Lord, what? Since the Lord blesses me, Genesis 49, 25. Ah, since the Lord, since the Lord, what? Amen. The Lord will never abandon me in Deuteronomy 4, 31. My God, you ought to give God a hand in praise. Since the Lord, what? Be still since the Lord. Since the Lord, what? Is with me. Genesis 28, 15. Since the Lord is directing my footsteps. Since he's directing my path. Since, ah, oh, are you listening, church? Ah, ah, since the Lord, amen. Since the Lord, what? Amen. Be still since the Lord, since the Lord, what? Loves me forever. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Since the Lord, what? Will fight for me. Deuteronomy 1 and 30. Ah, since the Lord, what? Holds my right hand. Isaiah 41 and 13. Since the Lord, what? Chose me. Ah, St. John 15. Amen. And 16. So church, listen, exemplify patience. Exemplify patience. Show patience. God is in control. He knows what's happening. He's allowed it to come into your experience. Uh, he knows exactly what's going on. Huh. Since the Lord carries me, 
Sister Lord, what? He carries me. He carries me on eagle's wings. Isaiah 46 and 4. Mm. He provides for me. Psalm 145 and 15. He's engraved me in the palm of his hand. Isaiah 49 and 16. Listen, y'all, this is why I try my best to convince the gainsayer and the backslider to come to God because Jesus Christ is better on your worst day than any of you. Mm -hmm. Lord, I got to quit. I got to quit. I got the God. He's in charge. Since he's large and in charge of everything that occurs in your experience and mine. Be patient. You serve the God of patience. If you need patience, no tribulation is coming. Trial is coming. Tests are coming to see how faithful and patient you're going to be. He wants you to be established in him. He wants you to be rooted and grounded so that you are not so soon moved away from your steadfast position. You understand what I'm saying to you? God is in charge, church. He's got us right where he wants us. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand of praise. Show something. Show some sign. Lord, I'm grateful for what you've done. I'm grateful for knowing you in the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. I am grateful for knowing you and that you are the God of patience. So now sit back and let patience have her perfect work. Sometimes God just has to get your attention so that you will know that he is the God that is in charge. You ain't got to always fix anything. <laughs> you don't always need closure. Sometimes you're not going to get an answer. But God, the Lord Jesus Christ, he knows exactly where you are. Come on, give God some praise. I love you. May the good God of heaven bless you. May he strengthen you. May he write his name all over your heart. If you would like, amen, to be water baptized in Jesus' name and being filled with the Holy Spirit, you can receive it in person service. We do have 18101 Avalon Boulevard in the city of Carson, California. Church, listen. We had such a time last week. The presence of God was in our midst. See, I love it when he comes into a room. And those of you who are online, you ought to show some heart. If you was in the room and you know there wasn't no, there wasn't no, it wasn't no show. There was no doubt about it. Because if there was any question about whether he was in the room, it's a good chance you don't have nothing. Because there's no way in the world for you to have the power of God on the inside and not know he's in the room. He came through, people were strengthened, people hollered, folks were delivered. All you just need to do, when he's in the room, you lift up your antennas, you lift up your hands, and he does whatever he chooses to do. Now, I can only speak for me because I know what God has given unto me. And so he's allowed me to know I am with you. Yes, I'm with you. So if you like to be an in-person service, you can come. Our service begins at 10 a.m. sharp in the city of Carson. Once again, 18101 Avalon Boulevard. On this Sunday, church, this Sunday, we will be having our first night service. That actually will begin at 4 p.m. We'll be testifying, we'll be singing. You ought to give God a hand praise for that because the Bible says that the saints of God, we are over, we overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. So you now get to testify about how God has brought you through, what he's taken you through so that the saints of God will draw strength from how he's, God uses us to strengthen his people. Are you listening to me? 
Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. On this Friday night, we will be having brotherhood prayer. Amen. The brothers will be coming together on Friday night at 730. Amen. It is open. Amen. Many of our brothers across town will be coming. So you are invited to come. We're starting at 730. Amen. We'll be praying. Will be exhort there'll be exhortation that will be going forth, and then there will be dinner afterwards. Just a little something to whet your appetite, whet your whistle, amen. And then you can go on home, amen. And then on Saturday, our women at 10 a.m. they will be meeting, amen. They will be strategizing and planning, amen, for what their events are going to be in the Lord should tarry this year. So you don't want to miss it. So Friday night. Saturday for the women, and then Sunday morning, Sunday morning service, and then at four o'clock will be our night service. So you ought to tell somebody. You ought to share with somebody. Night service at Ecclesia. You don't want to miss it. That's the time you can come. You can run. You can shout. If you need healing, come. If you need deliverance, come. If you got a stronghold that the back needs to be broken, you need to come because this is the season. Ah, little Oh, God. Ah, Yasatomonsha. I hear God. I hear you. I hear you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, you've got to understand and know you need to be where God is and not where God was. God is a God of progression. He moves forward. That's what happened with Saul. I can ah my shut up. Ah, what comes to mind, amen, a message that I heard on yesterday just giving me strength and comfort. When Samuel asked the question, God asked the question to, to, to um, Samuel, how long will you mourn over what I've rejected? Wherever I have been, that's where I have been. I am no longer there. I am somewhere else. You want to be where God is. You want to be where God's presence is because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. I've got to quit. I've got to let y'all go. May God bless you. Give God a hand praise. Let us let, let, let's, let's have, let's come with a mind to get into his presence. He'll break every chain. He will break every fetter. He will destroy every stronghold. Hallelujah to God. Listen, come, come. Come, come. If you'd like to donate to the Ecclesia of Christ, you can do so. The information is on the screen. I've got to let y'all go because I feel the anointing of God already moving. May God bless you. May God strengthen you. Amen. If you do not have the Holy Ghost, you can have it today. You will speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. Now, what's going to be happening? I might as well go on and give it to you now. In between service, our service will probably be over. Amen. About 12, 15, 12, 30. You can eat. You can refresh yourself in Gaither Hall. Amen. The sanctuary will be open for you to be able to go in and get down on your knees and pray and sit and sit in the corner. You know how the old mothers used to sit in the corner and they used to just rock and cry. Ah, you want to be delivered? Amen. God knows how to do some stuff in between, in between. Hallelujah. Amen. Just before our night service starts at four o'clock, we're going to start four o'clock sharp so you can come and be in the house of God, giving his name the honor, giving his name the glory, because there is none like him. There is freedom, there is liberty, where the spirit of the Lord is moving. May God bless you. May God continue to smile upon you. May he give you peace. Just want to remind you, continue to keep watchful eye, because you are going to have to continue to show patience and let patience have her perfect